Great. Let the lights on again. So that's the third time this week. I really need to see someone to help me get my life in check. Good morning, Doctor. No, it's not, Sam. It's not a good morning. I left the lights on again. It's rainy and I had to ride my bike here because my daughter decided to take the car out and ran out of gas. On top of that, I'm still in the doghouse. Only good thing about today is I get time away from my witch. Excuse me, my wife. Sir, you are a relationship counselor. Shouldn't your family life be perfect too? They don't listen to me, Sam. They say I'm controlling and bossy, and just because I have a PhD doesn't mean I know everything. I, I don't mean to complain to you, Sam. It's my job to listen to people complain. It's not yours. You're right. So for now, put your feelings aside because you need to listen to other people's sad stories and pathetic lives. Thanks, Sam. You really know how to cheer me up. What's my day look like? Busy as usual. 30 minute sessions with 10 minute rests in between. Uh, I believe you have two new clients. The Johnstons who just moved here from London. And the, um, oh goodness, can you remember the name of your new client? I think it was like Bolt something. The Boltons, you're right. You're right, yeah. Um, and then you, they have the new appointment at 5 o'clock. Boltons, what's, what's their deal? I believe they just inherited land up north. Um, they sounded very nice on the phone. But we know that's not the case because why would they be coming here? So Justin's at uh, half hour? Yes, sir. I'll leave you to your morning rest. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> No, Sam, no. I don't want to talk to weird people, okay? It's too early. Doctor, it's that time of day again. The Johnstons are here to see you. Who? The Johnstons, the new couple from London. Oh, right, yeah, the foreigners. This will be fun. Uh, not foreigners. They're from London, Kentucky, not London, England. 20 bucks says they're related. No! Doctor, you got to be kidding me. You're right. You're right. $20 isn't fair. 50 75 if they're brother and sister. That is strictly against our code. But... You're on. Yeah, that's what I'd like to hear. Just don't freak out. Wait, what? What'd you say? Don't freak out. Freak out about what? Just don't freak out. Sam! Sam! The doctor will see you now. Sam! Hey there, doctor. Hi. Nice to meet Tom. you. You alright? Let's move on. Oh. Nice to meet you. Alright, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, we're kind of new to town, so it's kind of lucky that me and Mom Blue Ribbon here got you so quickly. That's, that's nice. Oh, doctor, we do hope you'll be able to fix our marriage. I want to love my big shot, buckshot like I used to. <laughs> Can we address the elephant in the room? I don't see no elephant. Why is there a chicken in the room? <laughs> oh, this here is Budweiser. He's, uh, he's about one bear old. Ain't he sweet? I excuse me, did you say one beer old? Never mind, okay, we're, we're gonna move on from that. How, how did you two meet? <laughs> we met at the uh, county fair in 99. My mama brought me over to the BBQ tent, and uh, she said, Cletus, meet your cousin, Maria Lynn. And the minute I smelt the honey mustard on her breath, I knew she was going to be my honey mustard for life. <laughs> oh, Cletus. <laughs> well, we bought ourselves a trailer and, and drove down to Vegas and got ourselves married by the King Elvis himself. I do wish he'd perform again. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, we was, uh, we was doing fine. You know, like, watching NASCAR, hunting, beer, hunting with beer. But then we started arguing more and more, and, uh, well, now I'm sleeping in the chicken house. Been there a month now. 
I, I, I'm sorry to, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but down up wherever, here, we say sleeping in the doghouse. Well, that's a stupid thing to say. Why would you sleep in a doghouse? And anyway, Budweiser took my spot in the bed, so where am I supposed to sleep? Then you, Budweiser. Okay, okay, um, let's, let, let's play a little game, exercise thing. I'm sorry, I'm a little flustered right now. This is new. Um, I want each of you to say something that the other enjoys. Let's start with you, ma'am. <coughs> Cooking, cleaning, and, and making iced tea. Sir, are those correct? I don't like any of those things. Why would you think I like any of those? I don't know. I just, I just thought you did. Okay, um, your turn, sir. Three things that your lovely wife enjoys. <laughs> NASCAR, hunting aliens and Bigfoots, and the WWEs. <laughs> Okay, I think I understand what's what's going on. Um, you guys have a lack of communication. What what I suggest is one night a uh, one night a week. Hey, take one night a week and just talk to each other at least one night. You know, with no distractions, meaning no NASCAR, no WWEs. No hunting, and what's imperative is that you're sober for this. So, little to no alcohol and beer. Yes? And no Budweiser? <laughs> Budweiser. And, and Budweiser is fine, but that, that specific Budweiser is fine. How, come back in five weeks after this therapy, and we'll see how it's going, okay? Well, I don't like that lack of beer, but uh, I suppose I could give it a try. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. You're, we'll see you soon. You're welcome. See you in five weeks, sir. <laughs> Ain't he cute? Cute's a word. <laughs> Wait. And ma'am, um, please tell my assistant of how you guys met. That she loves hearing those stories. Surely. I'll be awful happy to. Thank you, Dr. Lovebat. Okay, cold chicken. Bye. Get out. Go, please, now. See you in five weeks. Go. Go. Who the chickens? Alex, what do you have there? It's, it's a picture of me and my wife from our first anniversary. We spent the month in Japan. She's very pretty. Are you having any trouble? Yeah. I don't know, it's... We used to not argue at all. Then it was once a year. Then once a quarter. Once a month. Once a week. At this rate, it'll probably be every day. Are you getting a divorce? I thought we would love each other unconditionally forever. And she's saying that I'm trying to control everything, how we raise our daughter, our life together. I'm only trying to do what's best, Sam. Alex, I mean, do you think that your best is, you know, a little too much? I don't... You don't know, no, I do know. I know that you're wrong. You don't know my family. You don't know them at all. I do. I know what they need, and I know how they need to get it. I know. I know. Alex, did you hear yourself? Sam, go ahead and cancel my two o'clock. Tell them it's a uh, family emergency and Tell them that you'll reimburse them for the inconvenience. Sure. Thanks. Oh, hi. Um, hi, can I help?
help you? We had an appointment at 5 o'clock. Yeah. It's 5 o one. No, you need a new assistant. She didn't so even bring me oh. sparkling water. Okay, um, I apologize for any inconvenience. Uh, 5 o'clock, you are the Boltons. Bolton. Fitting. Um, Alex. Chelsea. Pleasure. Oh, but, okay. Uh, and. Oh, <laughs> Oh, wow, wow. You have a mighty fine grip. Oh, sir. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. It's fine. Uh, would you like to take a seat? Yeah, sure. I'll... Okay. Okay. All right. What, what brings you in? Oh, well, we have this. Don't talk unless I tell you to. You see here, my husband has trouble listening. I'll tell him to do something and he won't do it. I'll tell him to not to do something and he'll do it anyways. There goes the maid. Isn't that right, honey? I... Yes, dear. I have trouble listening. Is that what I said? I could have sworn I said you have trouble doing things correctly. <coughs> But maybe I'm just crazy. Am I yeah. crazy, Philip? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. You hear that, Philip? The wannabe Abraham Lincoln with a PhD thinks I'm the crazy one. And you think so, too. Philip, don't answer that. Chelsea, Chelsea, excuse me. You, please keep it civil. Excuse me? I don't want hostility here. I want communication, not confrontation. Whatever, you are the doctor. Yeah. Philip, anything you want to say about whatever that is? N no, no. Take a seat, Philip. That's not necessary. I wasn't talking to you. Okay, I'll just go. Just let me get. Oh, okay. Ow, ow. Like, ow. It'll be fine. All right, Philip. What do you want to say? Don't answer that. No, Philip. Just us. She's not here. It's not here. Excuse me. Just us. Same All right. What do you want to you say? Are. Well. Okay, it was nice at first. It was. Um, she was sweet and caring and considerate. Really? Yeah. Keep your tone. But then. First, the week after we got together, she lost her job, and she just hasn't been the same since. She she became bossy and controlling, and I don't know, it's like she started blaming me for everything, and, and I want us to be happy together, I really do, but now she's not going to do any work in this thing. You know, it's just like, it's like some days she she blames me for everything, and she thinks I'm worse than she is. I don't know. Are you done, Philip? Are you done telling this man your lies? You are. Excuse me? <coughs> You have a superiority complex, ma'am. You need to just... First off, you need to get a job. Second, you need to treat this man like a man and not like dirt, all right? He wants things to be back to the way they were when you guys first met. But that's not going to happen until you get yourself in check, all right? You understand what I'm saying? Whatever. And you, Phil. You need to get somewhere safe. Find some place to stay for a little bit. Maybe a friend, a relative. Yeah. And, yeah. like, don't help her. All right? At most, pay for rent. But outside of that, no contact. She needs to learn that she has to do things herself before she can get anything right again. You understand? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lovepad. Thank you so no much. No problem. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Gosh. Um... I mean, just thank you. I, I never in a million years would I have thought to say something like that to her. Just, wow. I mean, you really know your way around a marriage. I swear you're a doctor, huh? I don't know about the marriage thing, but I try my best, and please call me Alex. And also, don't, don't worry about this session. It's on me. That's the least I can do with, you know. Yeah, I do. Well, again... Thank you so much. Bye.
I just hope if we meet again, it's not under circumstances like these. Agreed. Agreed. Um, good night, Alex. Take care, Phil. And, uh, I love you. You have yourself a good night, Phil. Good night, Sam. Good night, and good luck, Alex. Thanks. Alex, why are you calling me? You should be leaving the office by now. I'm calling you because I have to talk to you, Sasha. This can't wait. I'm afraid our marriage is dying. What are you talking about, Alex? We're, we, we're, we're out of touch. We, we're, we've lost connection. I, I deal with this every day. I deal with this thought every day. And every day it kills me more and more. Alex. Look, I know that you think that I'm controlling and that I have to know everything. But Sasha, please, just this once. Listen to me and don't question me. Don't doubt me. I love our daughter, Sasha. I love our dog. And I love our house. But I'm afraid our love together is gone. Alex, please. I have to deal with couples every day that have more love for each other than we do. And they have more problems, too. We haven't seen eye to eye in a long time. And I have been thinking that maybe there was no love left between us at all. But after today, after today I know. I don't know what to say. I know that I still love you, Sasha. I always have. I loved you with all my heart and then some. But this isn't just about me. It takes two for a relationship to work. So I need you to tell me, Sasha. I need you to tell me if we have to get divorced, or if we can stay together. If we can stay together, I will do everything and anything I can to make you happy. I will quit my job for you, Sasha. What? You're crazy, Alex. I got into this line of work so I can make couples happy and rekindle their love for each other. <laughs> now it's time that I rekindle ours. But. Where we go from here, if we go anywhere, is entirely up to you. Please, Sasha. I, I, 